Hey everybody, I'm Graham from Growthbook, and today I'm gonna to give you an in-depth guide as to how to use feature flags with your application. So let's get started. So for today's demo, I'm gonna use our Growthbook Cloud account. If you wanna self-host, the instructions are gonna be exactly the same and the behavior will be the same as well. Once you create your account, you'll be uh, presented with this Get Started page, which will walk you through the steps of integrating Growthbook with your application. We have a couple other videos on how to do that. It does depend on your tech stack. Um, or So please look in our documentation or for some other videos for that. I'm going to assume that uh, there is some integration that's already happened. So for the purposes of this demo, um, I do have a Next.js application over here. And that is running in this code editor over here. Um, and I have this hooked up to Matomo for event tracking, but um, you can use whatever event tracker you like. The steps are pretty much the same. So one thing to understand about Growthbook is that all the feature flag evaluations happen locally on your SDK. So when you set up Growthbook, there's a few steps you have to do. One is you set up Growthbook to pull the list of features from the API endpoint, and, uh, and then you evaluate those features with attributes about your users. And then Growthbook decides if it should be shown or not shown to that user. Um, based on the rules that you define in the Growthbook UI. So the result of the Growthbook UI, and we can grab this URL and take a look at it, um, is, is just a JSON object that describes every feature and what the rules are by which it should be shown or not shown. So let's get started by creating our first feature. So in this example, I'm going to create a feature that will show or hide the H1 on this page. So we're going to start by adding a feature here. So we're going to create the feature and we're going to call it show h1 so we can show or hide that h1. Um, there are two things on this modal that cannot be changed at a later point. One of them is the feature key and the other is the value type of this feature. So what type of feature this is. So just going through this field here, um, we have tags which can be used for organizational purposes. Uh, then we have the environments. There, we support arbitrary number of environments. Um, usually they map to your infrastructure, but you can use them however you like. Um, and these are default on or off, like depending on the entire feature can just have like a kill switch. That's what the, the main toggle does here. So we're going to toggle them all off except for the development environment, which is what we have connected to our Next.js application. The value type can be one of four different types. So we have Boolean, which is a simple on off feature, uh, a number which passes in a number, a string passes in a string, and then JSON allows you to pass in an arbitrarily arbitrary JSON object. So for this first demo, we're going to leave this as a Boolean. And then we're going to leave the targeting just as it is. We're actually going to turn it off for everyone for the moment and just create this feature. So here we have the feature page on Growthbook. We have the page called uh, the value called show h1. And we have the environments and then the default value here. Um, so basically, everyone on development will get served nothing at first. Um, and then we can add override rules to target this. So let's first implement this feature before we start adding the rules. So we're going to go up here and we'll click on show, show implementation. And we're using React, so we have uh, some sample code here. We've actually done some integration here on this application already. Um, but we're going to use this uh, if features enabled. So simply we just navigate here to our H1. And we're just going to wrap that in a, a show uh, if features enabled component. And I do have Copilot running. If you see it suggesting some weird code, that's probably Copilot um, getting a bit creative for us. Cool. So that's all I have to do to wrap my feature in a feature flag. So if we go back to our create next shape application, we see that the H1 has disappeared. So we're going to add an override rule and we're going to force the rule. So if you are an administrator, we are going to show this on. So this allows your like internal team, it could be a QA team or whomever, to preview the feature before everyone else does. So basically everyone will get off unless you match one of these rules, which will override the default behavior and serve an on instead. So we do have this yellow bar up here that shows the version controls. Every change you make to our features is version controlled. Um, so you can check out what we changed here and you can approve it. You can even write a little summary about what you changed and why you changed it. So once that's published, that should go live. Um, we do have a slight cache, so there might be a slight delay um, but if we go back to our application here, we should be able to see it. Yeah, and we do because we are an administrator. So if we change our administrator to false, we should it should just disappear. 
Great. So now we have feature flags enabled. It's listening to all the changes in the growth book UI, and there's no engineering required. So we can literally add any rules we want. We can change who we target this to um, based on any of these attributes. So this list of attributes here is defined in the growth book settings. So if we go over here, we have these attributes, and this is what that list is pulled from. Um, you can specify attributes as being an identifier, which means they can be used as randomization units. They can be used to assign um, you know, an experiment or a, a rollout. And this list of attributes should match the list of attributes you define in your growth book, uh, sorry, in your code. Um, so just be, keep in mind that this needs to be kept in sync. So let's go to a bit more advanced usage. Let's go back to our feature and let's add an A-B test. So let's go to show H1. So we're going to leave this uh, on for administrators, but we're also going to add a second rule for an A-B test experiment. And then we're going to choose how we want to expose our users to this experiment. So um, we have this percentage rollout. So what percentage of your traffic that makes it to this step in the, or makes it to this rule will be included in the experiment? And so you can adjust the variation here. You'll notice that the, uh, the UI here is very specifically done because we want to demonstrate that when you change the percentage of people exposed to an experiment, you're not, people are not switching cases. They won't never go from uh, purple to pink, right? They'll stay in one of these cases or they'll not be included. Um, you can customize the split and that will cause people to jump from one variation to another. So we suggest you uh, don't do that and you leave the weights equal. And then if you need to ramp it up to a smaller percentage of traffic, you use um, this slider instead. So let's create this experiment, and we're splitting based on ID. Um, and so 50% will get off and 50% will get on. So we're going to review and publish this. And then if we go back to our application, we'll see we're not an administrator. So we are going to be splitting our users based on this ID attribute. And so if we go back to our test case here, I think we got a case where it's off. So we can play around with it a little bit. We can go into here and maybe change our user ID and see if we get one that uh, causes it to render on. Yeah, there we go. So it's 50-50, a um, bit of a coin flip there. Cool. So let's go back to the test case where we had originally. I think where it was off. Yep. OK. So we also have a way to, uh, to QA and to help develop experimentation. We have this Chrome developer tools. And so if you click over to the growth book tab, we'll show you all the features that are enabled. And then you can see here, there's the H1 tag, the current value is off. And then we give you some debug, debug information about like why, why it is serving what, it, what it's serving. And it allows you just to kind of quickly change the values on the fly so you can test the different cases. Cool. Um, so, so now that feature is working, let's jump back to here. So we see there's two different rules here and the first matching rule wins. So uh, a user is evaluated against this first rule. If they match this condition, if they are an admin, they will be served on, and then no further rules are processed. If they are not an admin, they're going to fall past this rule, and they'll hit this rule, and this includes everybody, so they'll hit this rule. If you added a, a third rule, um, which, you're, which you're welcome to do, uh, it just won't do anything because everyone will be caught by this rule. You can also rearrange these rules, so you can drag them around, um, and then obviously you have to publish this to make the change. You can also just discard that rule or discard the change and it will revert back. When you're ready to deploy this to production, you can um, just copy this straight to production or we can just do copy just the A-B test to production. And so now we have this rule here and then you can just publish it and enable that flag for production and that will be live on the site. Cool, so that's a brief overview of how to use uh, binary flags. Let me just quickly show you how to use uh, some more advanced usage of the feature flag. So we're going to create a flag, and we call this one um, h1 title, and we're going to enable it in development, and we're going to make this a string uh, flag. So the default value will be welcome to our app. And so now we have a new tag called h1, and the, the value is welcome to our app. So we're going to jump over to the code, and uh, we don't have any rules yet. This is fine. We're just going to make sure this is implemented correctly. So here's our application. And instead of doing the if features enabled here, we actually remove that 
for the moment. And we're going to grab the value of that feature flag. So let's do, oh, well, Copilot got it pretty close. Uh, the feature name is h1 title, not whatever Copilot thought it was. Test feature, pretty good Copilot. Um, so there's, uh, there's grabbing the feature and that actually returns an object. So we need to grab, uh, well, let's do it on the next row. So we'll do const h1 value equals, yeah, feature value, and then some kind of default fallback. This default fallback is only if the, uh, for whatever reason, the API request fails. Um, because you can cache it locally and we encourage you to cache it locally, it should really never fail. Um, but just to be safe, we'll add that anyway. And then we're just going to use this in our code here. Instead of the default title, we're just going to grab that value. So let's take a look at what that should do. So it should be pulling this welcome to our app from our growth book uh, instance and serving that onto our page. So what it means is you can actually set up remote configuration. So we can actually have this change, uh, you know, always better with more exclamation points. So we'll publish that. Um, so there it's pulling in the new version. Okay. Um, Cool. So yeah, so we could also add an A-B test with the dynamic value. So here we can create an A-B test and we'll again assign by the ID. And then we can change the different values to um, whatever, whatever you want. And then we can save that. And now we have an A-B test running where half the people will get welcome to our app and the other half will get our app is great. So we have our experiment running with two different variations and you can, you can also create multiple variations. So if we want to add a third case here, we can do that, um, whatever that might be. So yeah, it gives you complete flexibility to after the fact to adjust what's happening on your site using feature flags um, as well. So that's, that's really powerful. So I hope you enjoyed this look at how you can use feature flags with your application using GrowthBook and the power that you get using experimentation, force rollouts, and the other override rules that we've shown. If you have any questions on implementation or usage, please don't hesitate to let us know. We have a Slack channel that you can join. Uh, the links are on our site, or you can reach us at hello at growthbook.io. Thanks so much for watching.